This is the 2020 Nissan Titan XD Pro 4X Crew Cab. And today, we're going to review it. Today, we're working with our friends at Mankato Nissan in Mankato, Minnesota. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, two guys, guys in a ride. And say, Nate, what are we taking a look at today? Rob, today we are taking a look at the beautiful 2020 Nissan Titan XD Pro 4X Truck Crew Cab. Wow, that's a mouthful. Yes, it anyway, is. Anyway, but before we do, if you want to keep up to date with all the new cars, trucks, and SUVs, and you want to know how to use all the infotainment systems and gadgets and electronic gizmos that are built into the new vehicles, plus you like cool collector car stories, Take a moment to hit that subscribe button down below and ring that bell notification up above so you never miss a video. So, I don't know, Nate, what do you say? Oh, same thing I say every time. That's right, let's, let's go, go for, for a ride. ride. Let's go. Welcome to our how-to video on the Nissan Titan uh, XD 4X. And what we're gonna be talking about is the driver's information center and the infotainment screen and what's in there and how to run them. So we're going to start with the driver's information screen. So first of all, this is a 7-inch screen measured diagonally. Uh, it's very nice. Uh, it is very clear. Uh, so we have two buttons over here to control the driver's information screen. You have an enter button, which you can push. You can also go up or down with it. And then you have a left-right. All right. So basically, uh, you know, normal driving, you're going to be using probably these two would be my guess. And these take us through all the basic pages. So if I press to the right, I get traffic sign. Okay, if I'm driving, it's gonna show me the speed limit. Okay, it shows me uh, which driving aids are on. And then uh, tire pressure, but you do have to be driving for that to appear. And then you get to settings. And now settings, I can use this other button and then go down. You got driver assistance, meter settings, and so on. And we'll get back to that in a minute. Okay. I'm going to continue going to the right. You got your digital speed, your average miles per hour. You have an off road uh, set of gauges, which tells you which wheels are turning, where the power is going, when, in what mode you're in, or whether it's uh, four wheel drive or, or, four, or two wheel drive. And then over here, you've got another different angle uh, graph that's showing you how the vehicle is tilting. Okay? Now, uh, if I go over one more, you have some auxiliary gauges. So there's actually four auxiliary gauges. So the first one here, of course, is your engine temp and your battery. And then the second set is your oil pressure. And the second one is your oil temperature. If I go over here again, you get some driving information, how many miles you've driven, the time you spent driving, and miles per gallon. Click one more time, I get fuel economy. I have a little graph that will run while I'm driving. Click it again, this is your audio. So it'll tell you what source you're on. So now if I go to the, um, let's, let's go to the source button for a minute. Okay, and I, if I keep clicking that, it'll go through the sources so you can see them on your screen. It also changes on the infotainment screen, but let's say I'm in FM and I want to change the preset. Well, then I can use the up and down here to change the preset. All right? If I go to the next one here, this is if you were driving and had navigation showing, uh, this is where your turn-by-turn -turn direction would, would come in. Okay, and then we're back to the traffic sign. Now, let's go back to that one that had a whole, there we go, the whole list in here. So now to get into them, I'm going to press the enter button. So on driver assistance, I just press enter. And then I use my, my up and down on this enter button to go through them. So there's lane, blind spot, emergency brake, traffic sign, driver attention, parking aids. Hey, okay, if I want to look at the lane one, I just click the enter button. And it tells me that the lane departure warning is on. If I click enter again, okay, now okay, now it's on. When it's grayed out, it's off, and when you press enter, it colors it and it's on. Okay, now there is no back button on the steering wheel, so you just use the left arrow and it goes back. Okay, go to blind spot, I'll click on that. Okay, that's on, blind spot warning system, but if I click the enter button, I turn it off. Okay, I'm gonna use the left arrow again to go back, the emergency brake. 
it's on for the front and it's on for the rear, but you can independently turn one of those off or both of them off. Not sure why you'd want to do that, but, and then I'll press the left button arrow again. Traffic sign is, if you click the enter button, you just turn it on or off. Okay, same thing with driver attention. Parking aids, I click the enter button again. Now, if you wanted to detect a moving object, you can have that on or off, right? So when it's off, it's grayed out and it doesn't have the orange little orange dot by it. Okay, over here, you can have the uh, CTA on or off. You can have the sensor on, on front only or off completely. And you would just click the enter button to change that. So I'm gonna leave that on, of course. Okay, the display. You can turn the whole display off if you want the, for, the, for, for parking aids. This is the parking aid one, okay, or leave it on. And then anything that uh, will chime at you or make a noise, then you can set the volume level to high, medium, or low. And just set it by clicking on it, and then it comes back and tells you what it is. Okay? And then the range that this parking aids will reach out, you can change that by pressing enter, and you can have them reach out far as they can, middle, or near. So if they're, sense, if they're set to sensing near, just by pushing the, the uh, enter button, now an object could be closer to your car and it wouldn't sense it. So to me, I, I, I'm gonna leave it on far. Give me some good warning when things are on the way. All right, and that's it for parking aids. So we'll use the left arrow and go back out. And then that's the end for driver assistance. So we'll use the left arrow again to go backwards. And then we have meter settings. So I'll click the enter button. And you have, okay, main menu selection. So you see all these white boxes here, and as I go through, it'll show you what it has. You know, when, I, when I'm using the left, right arrows earlier, and we were going through all those screens, that's where you get to select uh, which ones show up. So right now, speed is selected. Off-road is selected. Auxiliary gauges. These are all the ones that we saw earlier. Okay, let's say I don't want to have tire pressure on. Okay, it's the box is highlighted in orange and it's white in the middle. If I click the enter button, it becomes grayed out. Now tire pressure won't show up when I scroll through the menu. So you can customize what shows up when you're pressing those left right arrows on this screen. All right, I'm gonna push the left arrow again. Eco drive report. All right, you can have that display on or off. And then you can actually go to an EcoDrive report and it'll show you um, this information. All right, let's go left uh, arrow to go back. We'll go back again and we'll go to the welcome effect. This is what happens when um, you start up the car, you saw the dial spin. Well, I can turn that off here. And then the display kind of came on, did a few things. So I can turn that off if I want as well. I'm going to leave them on because I like those. Okay, I'm going to use the left arrow again. We're going to go down to vehicle settings. Okay, now over here, rear, do rear door alert. Okay, you can uh, turn that off, alert only, or alert and horn. So we'll leave that on alert only. Lighting. You can have the welcome light on, the auto room lamp on or off, and you just would press the enter button to change that. Light sensitivity. Okay, you can turn it on at the earliest moment possible, turn on just a little bit earlier, turn on standard, or turn on later. I'm just gonna use the left arrow to go back. And then you have the light off delay, so when you get out of your car, you want the lights to stay on for a while to get to the door of your house, here's where you set that. So you can just press the enter button, and you can change it between zero seconds and, let's see, zero seconds and 180 seconds. All right, I'm gonna press that left arrow again, I'm going to press it one more time. Turn indicators. So the you have the three flash to pass. So that's when you just take your turn signals and you just turn them up. You just touch them. You don't click them all the way. Okay, so in the lock position, it'll flash three times and then turn off. Okay, if I press the enter button, of course, that turns off. Okay, let's do the back arrow again. Locking. Okay, you have the I key door lock on or off by pushing the enter button, select on lock, 
or selective unlock, excuse me, uh, on or off, the answer back horn, so when you hit the lock, the horn will sound, and then auto unlock when you shift into park, which is a nice feature, for your passengers at least. All right, let's push the left arrow, wipers. Okay, rain sensing on or off, and headlamp on when the wipers are turned on. Okay, you can have that off, wipers low or high, or wipers um, intermittent, or wipers intermittent, low and high. All right, so the lights will come on when, when those things happen. All right, last one is the memory seat. Okay, so you can have the seat slide backwards when you're exiting, and you can have the steering wheel tilt up and pull in, and then you could also have a reverse tilt mirror. So the reverse tilt mirror is either on or off. So for that, you actually have to go down to your mirror control on the door, and if it's if it's left uh, or right, that's on, and if it's in the center, it's off. So if you if you ever wonder why my mirror's not tilting, it's probably because it's set in the center. All right, let's go back to and actually three. Here's your towing settings, so you can go in here. You can do a trailer light check. We don't have a trailer hooked up, but that's where you would do it. Your alerts, press enter here. You got a timer alert if you want to set a timer, navigation alerts, phone alerts, or mail alerts. And again, it's just a simple press the enter button to turn it off, press the enter button to turn it on. We'll hit the left button again. Maintenance, press the enter button. You got oil and filter, air filter, tire, brake pad, brake fluid, battery. What else do we have in here? Transmission fluid, engine coolant, spark plug, and other. So let's just go into one of these because they'll all work the same way. Um, I like this that they have the brake, brake pad and brake fluid warnings. So if I click the enter button, okay, it'll tell me, uh, you know, how many miles I have on the brake pad. All right, if I go to brake fluid, it'll tell me the same thing. So it's it's telling me when I'm going to need to change those things. Okay, so under other, okay, you can reset for anything you want. You can't rename it, but if you remember what is there, so maybe you want to do a tire rotation or something, you could, you could put that in there. All right, let's go back a couple here. And let's go down here. So here is where you can change your units. So you got uh, your miles. If you click it here, you can change it between miles or kilometers. So we'll press the left one again. But that's where you change that. You can change your, your uh, pressure from PSI to KPA. And then you can change your temperature from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Let's go back a couple. Right. Here's where you can change the language, and here, if you mess up completely, you can press enter and do a factory reset. All right. Now, let's talk about some of the other buttons down here. Again, this is your source button for your media. This is your volume up and down. This is your voice command. This is your phone on or off. Over here is all the adaptive cruise control. you got on, off. Down is set. Up is resume or accelerate or deaccelerate, cancel, and then this is your gap setting for your adaptive cruise control. And it'll show up on your dashboard. You got three bars that you can that you can set. All right, moving over to the infotainment screen, let's just start first with kind of the layout and how it looks. So basically these buttons here, or they're all soft touch, they're all screen touch, but those will pretty much be avail available to you almost all the time. Okay, there are certain occasions where it disappears, but you can always press the home button to get back to them. The screen up here is configurable. You've got three different dots, and if you use the arrows, you can go through the different uh, screens. So right now, you've got your media, you've got your navigation, whoops. Um, you've got previous destinations, you've got a POI thing, and then you've got a call history if your phone's hooked up. If I go over to my left, you get a little different picture. You got a digital clock, you've got your USB one, your text messages, custom uh, channel, uh, home channel, and then a Sirius XM satellite that you can, so you can easily access those things. Okay, if I press this, it switches just to uh, a, a, like a flip clock from the 80s. All right, if I go over here, 
yeah, I get a little different look. So here I've got some like Sirius XM traffic, XM sports, weather, fuel prices, and stocks. Okay, and if I hit the arrow again, I just go back to the screen I had. Where you set all that is under settings, under customize home menu. And from here, you can pick your three screens that you want to customize, and you can customize them all. And what you can do is you can change what's in these boxes. Okay, so if I want Sirius XM to be here, I click, drag it, replace, okay, takes the clock out, okay, it doesn't make Sirius XM large, but allows me to have more buttons, okay, so it's a click and drag. Up here, you can scroll through the different things that you can put in there, and again, it's just a click, drag, and put it in, okay, now, when you go back to menu, okay, well, you say, well, that's the same screen I just saw, yep. But if I go backwards one, okay, there's the new one. Now, I haven't added the other two. You remember that? I didn't add those in, so they're not showing up. But you could actually have, you know, four or five buttons showing up. will be five buttons. So eight buttons total, four on the top, four on the bottom if you want it. Okay, so you can customize all that, and that's where you do that. All right, well, let's go through some of the physical controls. To turn it on and off, you got a, you know, power, a push power button. you got volume here. You have got tune and scroll or enter settings here, and this is a clickable button as well. Now, when I go through this, you'll notice that in this mode, it operates the radio. So even though the radio is not on, I can switch stations. Okay, If I click it, it's going to bring me to the, the sound settings. So bass, treble, balance, fade. Okay? And if I click it there, if I just rotate the knob, I can change those. So those are almost instantly accessible with a physical button. All right, now I'm gonna go back to this screen for a minute. And uh, these are all shortcuts. So you just click on them and, and it's go home. It sets a navigation. So these are really nice shortcuts and you can really set it up the way that you like it. Okay, you can also like find your sources by clicking on sources and then figuring out which one you want and just clicking on it. You can also customize the audio sources. Okay, so you just drag a source icon from the top area to the to the bottom bar. So these are the ones that are currently showing, but maybe I want USB 2 to show up instead of Bluetooth, and then it changes it for you. I'm going to change that back because I think most people will want a Bluetooth one in there. And then here is your back button. It's up on the top of the screen. Clock is always up there. All right. If you want to go to audio stuff, you just press the audio button, and it takes you right to whatever's currently on. And right now it's the FM radio, but you have your clickable sources right here. So just a quick touch changes all those sources. You also have all your presets up here, no matter which uh, function you're in, or AM, FM radio, whatever. You also have the HD radio button right here. This button, if you click it, it is linked to the navigation, and if you don't have the navigation scrolling, you can click it. Proceed to the nearest road. And it will uh, you know, tell you what your next turn is, or where you are. So if you forgot, like, what did it say I was supposed to turn there? You can click that, and, and it'll tell you. You also have more presets over here. So you have up to 12. All right, let's go back to the menu for a minute. All right, so that was audio button, which is the same as this little uh, button right here. They're, they're duplicates. All right, phone button. I don't have a phone hooked up, but if I did, this is where my phone would come up. All right, so let's click on Info. Under info, of course, you've got all sorts of things, um, you know, notifications, uh, Nissan Connect services, XM weather, traffic, parking, fuel prices, I mean, and then you got an arrow you can click and go over and see more. One of the things that's kind of nice, especially this is, this is a 4x4 four four and it's meant to, to be off-road, um, if you hit GPS position, it actually gives you uh, some very, very detailed descriptions of where exactly you are and so if you ever need to get lost or if you ever get lost you can give somebody that information as long as your battery's still running if i go over one more you get the uh, movie listings vehicle reports oh wait i'm already there you can also get the uh, tom tom weather so there's two screens of information there all right if i uh, i'm gonna skip audio we've already been to menu let's go to map it does actually have a really nice screen and a really nice map um so Right down here you get, now this changes. See now all the little buttons disappear. Now you have navigation controls. So, okay, so I can cancel, plug a route in, a destination, zoom out, zoom in. This settings button is for the settings on the entire infotainment screen, not particular to the navigation. Okay, I can click on here. 
So I can save a location, look at points of interest, the map settings themselves. So if it's, you know, is it true north or is, is it a 3D view or whatever, you can change that there. Map icons, traffic info settings, and then you can cancel your route there. Now, there's a back button up there. When you're running a route, you can actually cancel right on the screen as well. Now, this icon here uh, will send vehicle data to Nissan for purposes including the Nissan Connect services. So um, that's that you'd have to click to accept or decline, but if you don't accept it, some features may not work. All right, let's go back to menu for a minute. <clears throat> Connections. This is where all of your connections would be. This has got a Wi-Fi hotspot built into it. So you look at that. You can look for USB uh, that's plugged in. Now, to update, you know, you connect this to your home Wi-Fi, which is where you'd want this one. And then you can also have a vehicle hotspot. And then you've got some settings you can turn on. So that when you're hooking to your Wi-Fi at home, you can, uh, this, will, this will be helpful. All right, under settings, you got your connections, which would be, you know, which phones are you connected to. You've got your phone. You've got navigation, sound, volumes, and beeps. So if something's too loud on the truck for you, this is where you adjust that. Okay, guidance volume, ringtone volume, outgoing call, button beeps, voice guidance. That's all there. That's where you adjust that. You can change your clock right, or set it. And then uh, down here, we already did this one. You can customize your audio sources, and that kind of works uh, the same way we showed you that screen already. Uh, but you would just click and drag those down here. So they show up when you hit the source button. These are the things that show up. Now you got two screens because you got two dots on here. So we go over one more to the right. Your Nissan Connect services button is here. Your uh, system voice is here. Cameras here. General system update. And then apps. So if I go to camera for a minute and I go to display settings, I can change the brightness. Now, what I have to do is I have to click on it with this button and then I can rotate this dial and you can hopefully see the screen change a little bit. Then, if I, when I'm done where I want, I just press it again. Then I can rotate down and I can hit contrast. And then I can change the contrast. So you can change all of these things. Uh, tint, color, and black level all by uh, just adjusting with this button. All right. General includes things like the language. You can look at display. Um, you can have the display on or off. And then, of course, it's just another way to get the brightness, contrast, and black level. You can change units there, keyboard type, and then return all settings to default in case you mess up. I do like that they include that. Okay, the voice activated system, um, you have um, some choices here. You can have your voice preference can be uh, female or male, okay? And then the speech rate, faster or slower. Um, you can have short voice prompts on um, or best match lists. Uh, so you have a few customizations that you can do in that system. All right, down here. You have, of course, a fast forward or a rewind or a fast forward button. You do have a physical camera button, which is the one you want to turn on if you're driving forward and parking. Okay? And if you're in drive, it's going to show you the front view. And if you're in reverse, it's going to switch to the back view. It's also going to auto tilt your outside mirrors for you. Okay? And then, of course, you have a, a day night switch to make it a little bit brighter or dimmer. And then you have the physical back button. Um, really like the camera you notice that it says mod is in blue and then mod is in white that means the the, the like the whole sensor system that senses uh, things moving around you is off in this view but on in this view okay, it works like i said earlier on the drive it works it's kind of like a rear cross traffic alert on steroids it's everywhere around the car now you do have to be moving um below a certain speed, and, I, I, and it's parking lot speed. It, it's like six miles an hour um, <clears throat> for that particular part to function. But I think it's so nice that they have that safety system built in. Not only that, but this has this not is only a 12 speaker, speaker pedestrian detector, fender, premium but also audio system rear. with Apple so CarPlay, auto and brake for you, auto, in rear or reverse, and that um, is not a usual Bluetooth, thing that you see on cars. Forward, yes, not HD reverse. radio. 
So, so it's a very nice really sounding like system. system. And I really like and this camera. The, the screen is very really responsive. Nice. There's one on the front grille, one on the bed back, and then what a couple you see. underneath each of the side mirrors. So, and of course, you do have dynamic swivel guidelines. Moving on down, you've got your climate control system, which is dual zone auto climate. And then uh, in the rear, there's no fan speed or anything. It's just the air vents. Uh, but you've got physical buttons for everything. In fact, the infotainment screen does not even show the uh, climate control. So everything is physical, which I'm just fine with. But you got recircular, you got your fresh air, you got recirculatory, your AC on, your different modes, and they'll show up in this screen right here. You've got your fan speed, you got on and off, and you got your defrosters, uh, uh, front and rear. And then, of course, um, this you, you push it to set it to auto, and you push it to sync the temperatures together. Okay? Nissan uses the word dual, but it's the same as sync. And then, if you change the temperature, if I take the dual mode off and I change, you notice both sides change. If I just take and change the passenger, it automatically turns the dual mode on. And then if I want to sync them back, click that off and they're, and they're synced back again. Down here, you got your vehicle stability control systems down here on or off. Your parking sensors are on or off. Your hazards, your blind spot warning system, and then your heated steering wheel, which is really nice in this climate, although not needed today. Below that, you got your uh, brakes for your trailer, and you got your adjustments right here, and you got a nice digital screen so that when you do change it, the numbers will show up digitally. You got two different USB plugins, and that'll connect you to your Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and then you have your four wheel drive switch here. Last thing I want to show you is the uh, climate controlled seats. So you have three stage cooled seats and three stage heated seats. Now when I say cooled, I mean air conditioned, not ventilated. There's definitely a fan underneath there, but there's air conditioning being piped in. So it's just a simple rotate. works like your climate knobs do. Got three for the blue and three for the red. Okay, and then the middle, the light goes off so you don't see anything. As soon as you turn it one way or the other, the orange light comes on. And then you have a 12 volt power outlet right there. All right, I hope that has been helpful about what's available on the uh, the Nissan Titan's uh, infotainment screen and on the driver's information screen. Hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.